All right. So, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So yesterday with Kids Club, we gave a uh, preview to today's topic. This is an interesting topic to share at this point of the service. And I know that there were some Kids Club kids that were expecting some Reese's Peanut Butter Cups this morning. I do not have them with me. I will tell you I did eat six yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but I already heard that some of you have some at home. So try the stunt to see if you get it before dinner. But one of the things that this church does well, one of the things, is we shower people in prayer. I have had family members joke about making sure a request gets on our prayer list for those good Baptist prayers. And today, as we have just shared our praises and prayer requests and shared the pastoral prayer, it makes me want to share a question with you that I often think about. Have you ever had a prayer go unanswered? So I'm going to ask that question again, and I'm going to use quotes. Have you ever had a prayer go unanswered? Yes. yes. Have you ever been confused, frustrated, or angry about the answers that you did or did not receive? Yes. Have you ever felt, why didn't God give me what I asked for? Or why did God give me this answer? I heard some yeses, saw some shakings of heads, and if that's you, and let's be honest, it should be all of us. We're all in good company, right? We've all felt that way. Our relationship with God doesn't always make sense. We all go through situations that can leave us feeling confused. And this very point of unanswered prayer is often at the middle of that in our relationship with God. At its worst, we can become bitter towards God and his seeming lack of understanding care and effectiveness to act on our behalf when we don't receive the answer we were expecting. This divine dilemma has been going on for hundreds, may I say thousands of years. In fact, when we open our Bibles, we hear how some of our heroes of faith process their answers to their feelings about our answer prayer. After losing most of his family and fortune, Job said, I cry out to you, O God, but you do not answer. I stand up and you merely look at me. Job 30, 20. And tired of running from his enemies, King David said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the words of my groaning, O God, I cry out to you day by day, but you do not answer. And by night, I am not silent. That's in Psalm 22. And after the death of their brother Lazarus, Mary and Martha told Jesus, if you had been there, our brother wouldn't have died. Because they had been praying and crying out. If you had been there, our brother wouldn't have died. And that's in John 11. And as you guys know, this list could go on and on. So how do you respond when you feel like God isn't responding to us? Do you cry out like David or Job? Do you get sad and hurt like Mary and Martha? Do you walk away, shut down, give God the silent treatment? If we didn't have masks on today, I bet I could see some more of your faces smiling, and I because I certainly see some of you shaking your head in understanding these feelings. All of the things I mentioned are ways that we respond in relationship when we don't like the response we're given. We run away, we get mad, we get angry in relationships when we don't like the response we're given. And it complicates everything when we realize that the point of our frustration sometimes is God. On some level, we know that he makes the blind see. He makes the mute speak, the lame walk, and that he created things like the duck-billed platypus. So why won't he fix my problems? Why won't he answer my prayers when I ask him? How am I supposed to respond to that? So today, I'm going to share with you three practical ways that you can respond when you are frustrated, confused, or angry with the answers that you're getting or not getting. First and foremost, we wait on God. I know. Waiting is awful. 
I suck at waiting. So this might not be a popular answer, but this is a powerful way to respond. The prophet Isaiah said, even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Trying to understand the plans and purposes of God is tiring. So tiring that even youths can grow weary. But those who respond with patience and those who wait on their God will find their strength renewed. Because Isaiah goes on to say, they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. So how many of you today feel tired of and weary from waiting? It can be hard to wait. Hard to trust that God is going to come through and answer. How many of us have felt tired and felt like we had waited long enough and that we had prayed so much for the last two years until that answer finally came last Sunday? I know many of us need to some movement in the waiting, right? I have good news to share with you. Waiting on the Lord doesn't necessarily mean that we sit still and stop moving. That brings me to my second point. Another powerful way to respond while we're waiting and when we're frustrated and confused and angry is that we keep walking with God. I could probably take the, the next hour to elaborate on this point, but I'm going to let God's word do that for us. And we're going to focus on a scripture this morning in Mark chapter 5, if you will turn with me there. This is about Jairus and his daughter. So we're going to pick up the story in Mark chapter 5, starting at verse 22. One of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and kept begging him, My little daughter is at death's door. Come and lay your hands on her so she can get well and live. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd was following and pressing against him. So right here in the story, we meet Jesus. It probably took a great deal of courage for Jarius to come to Jesus, as many of the religious leaders were already bent on destroying him. But Jarius presents his case and his request to Jesus, who is, in return, decides to go with Jarius to presumptively help him with his dying daughter. Jarius' love for his daughter forced him to lay aside any prejudice or preconceived notions that he had about Jesus. However, as they begin their journey, a woman who is very familiar to us, we just shared her story last month in talking about hope. I think this woman, her hope applies here as well. We, Jarius and Jesus come across a woman who had been suffering for 12 years. And we have to admire this woman's faith and her hope in Jesus because she made her way through a very dense crowd to get to Jesus. And because of that, her faith was rewarded on the spot and ultimately her illness was miraculously healed, all the while Jarius is waiting in tow, counting the seconds, breathing his daughter's name in and out as Jesus is helping other people. So picture it, you're Jarius. How do you feel? It wouldn't be a stretch to say that Jarius was getting antsy or maybe a little irritated because his thoughts are probably exactly what you think they would be. Wait a minute, we were going to hear my daughter. What about my request? What is Jesus doing? My daughter's gonna die. And then the unthinkable happens. Jump with me to verse 35. While he was still speaking, People came from the synagogue leader's house and said, Your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? I can't fathom what Jarius was feeling at this point. His emotions were most likely swimming and quickly shock, sadness, anger, frustration, envy even at the woman who took the time that Jesus could have used for his daughter. Emotions that might have all felt they might have all felt in an instant. When Jarius heard this news. But let's keep reading. Because if we look at verse 36, Jesus says, But when
when Jesus overheard what was said, he told the synagogue leader, don't be afraid, only believe. It seems as if they continued walking here towards the home of Jairus, where Jairus performed where Jesus performed another astonishing miracle. He took the young girl by the hand, told her to get up, and rescued her from the silence of the grave. Let's look at verses 39 to 42. He went in and said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. They started laughing at him, but he put them all outside. He took the child's father, mother, and those who were with him, and entered the place where the child was. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which is translated, Little girl, I say to you, get up. And immediately, the little girl got up and began to walk. She was 12 years old, and at this, they were utterly astounded. Jarius had to literally walk with Jesus. And we read about that journey for 18 verses after Jarius initially presented his request for help. He had to watch as Jesus stopped to heal someone else, and during that process, his daughter died. The same thing happens to us on our journey with Jesus after we petitioned him in our prayers. Things don't always go how we think it's gonna go. Our prayers, our requests, our cries for help aren't answered on our timelines. When everything seems to be falling apart around us, and even our friends discourage us, all we can do is cling by faith to the promises of God. Remember, we're working with the eternal creator of the entire universe. And sometimes, we just need to keep walking with him while we wait for the answer to come. Now, I shared this visual with the Kids Club kids last night in my message. When I was a kid and we talked about God's answers to prayers, we talked about them being like a stoplight. Green being a yes, red being a no, and yellow being to wait. And for me as a kid, and sometimes now as a grown-up, that yellow light <laughs> is hard. And having to keep walking with God until the answer comes is sometimes even harder than the red light. That waiting is sometimes harder than just getting a no. A no is at least a definitive answer. But that wait, it's not time yet, is so hard. Which brings me to my last point about responding when we're frustrated, confused, and angry with the response we're getting, we worship. In the waiting, while we're walking, we worship. We are a people of praise, and we are to have the eternal creator of the universe to receive our honest, heartfelt worship. When King David was trying to process and understand the Lord's plans and purposes for his life, he worshiped. The songs we have are a collective cry out of, up to the ears of our creator from David. After Job lost his livestock, his servants, his sons, and his daughters, he got up and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell to the ground in worship. In the song, Even When It Hurts, by Hillsong United, even when my strength is lost, I'll praise you. Even when I have no song, I'll praise you. Even when it's hard to find the words, louder than I'll, louder than I'll sing your praise. Amen. I can keep going on the song examples because you know that's how God talks to me, but I won't. There, these are just a couple examples of the power of praise from both ancient and contemporary folk. There could be a thousand more lyrics to share with you. C.S. Lewis is quoted as saying, it is in the process of being worshipped that God communicates his presence to men. And that statement rings true for me. God talks to me through music, through videos, through inspirational stories or memes at just the right moment, and it becomes worship for me. Ponder this thought with me. What if your worship actually brings you closer to him? closer to his presence? What if worshiping God brings you closer to the 
answers and response that you're desperately seeking. Did King David know something about worship that we don't? Have we stopped singing and praising because we're too hurt, or we're too confused, or we're too tired of hoping for answers that you're not believing are coming anymore? I can't answer that for you. I can, however, encourage you that worship is a powerful and, ex and effective response when we are feeling frustrated, confused, and angry. Because this journey of life is hard. It's a difficult one. And I recommend keeping the music turned up really loud yes. and keeping your eyes on Jesus all the way. Amen. Amen. So there are three points that we discussed here today. Waiting, walking, and worship. Yes. By no means is this the whole list. In reality, there are dozens of ways that we can respond to unanswered prayer, both positive and negative. And while our prayers seem to go unanswered, which begs the question, do we trust his response? Mm -hmm. And even more importantly, do we trust him? So as I wrap up this message, and as Jamie's coming forward, I want to leave you with this final example. In John 11, we have the miraculous story of Lazarus, whom Jesus called out of the grave after he had been dead for days. Four days. Well, this is undoubtedly one of, if not the most powerful miracle performed by Jesus in the Gospels, it is preceded by confusion, Sadness and doubt. Both Mary and Martha are sad that Jesus didn't respond sooner to their requests for him to come and heal Lazarus while he was sick. In fact, as I mentioned earlier, they were quite mad at him. If he had just been here sooner, he wouldn't have died. But even when the disciples who were with Jesus, they must have been confused as to why Jesus didn't respond sooner to the request of Mary and Martha. It's Jesus' response to them that gives us the divine insight as to why Jesus waited. This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory that God's Son would be glorified through it. Jesus waited to answer that prayer of Mary and Martha so that we could see that miracle and be able to see what else was coming. Just like many times that we're waiting on God's answer to prayer, while those on the inside of the situation are confused and frustrated, God, who is on the outside of the situation, is working all things together for the good of those who love him Amen. and who have been called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. He knew all along what he was doing. In the two and a half years of frustration here, he knew all along what he was doing. Those on the inside had to wait how to keep walking and be patient as the miraculous answers to our prayers unfold. So my friends, I want to encourage us all to keep waiting, yes. keep walking, keep worshiping, and ultimately keep trusting that the Lord of the universe is working in yourself, in your situation, and on your behalf. So if you know it, let's sing together a chorus before we do the last hymn, so it's not in there. And may it be a prayer of meditation in moments of waiting for the Lord. In moments like these. You started by yourself, I can't talk. Okay. In moments like these. 